Love Line is meant for an adult audience. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Oh, oh, now here's Love Line. With R R Ricky, Ricky Rackman, <laughs> uh, Dr. Drew, Aye. and Adam Carolla. Won't you drill? If you'll allow me, that'd be great. Actually, I'm going to cut you off. Okay. Let me give you the phone number. 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. That number again, 1-800-568-3191. Or you can fax us at 310-854-4455. Again, I'm Adam Carolla. We have Dr. Drew here. Ricky Rackman, who's usually uh, the predominant voice you hear her on this show. And I hear in my head, by the way. Still. Yeah. Yes, I can't what's, get rid of it. What's he telling you to do? I, he's telling me to kill. Ugh. But he's telling me to kill my dog, which is different than when my dog was telling me to kill him. Uh -oh. I think they're feuding. So I'm going to drill a hole in my forehead after the show. Uh, he's on vacation. He'll be back next week. He's in Florida. We have no guests tonight. We only have me and you, Drew. But we always have fun when that happens. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay. And let, let me start with a hypothetical question. Oh, boy. Wait, before you do... What? His, his voice is like... Killing me in my headphones. I, I like, have a deviated septum, Drew. Are you making fun is. of me? I don't know. It sounds terrible. But go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. There. Now I'm all built up. That's Feeling better. real good about myself. Is it better? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I continue? Yeah, please. Okay. Hypothetical question. I want the men and the women callers to join in on this hypothetical question and give it some thought. Don't make a quick answer here. I'm going to ask Drew first off. I wouldn't tell him before the show what right. the question is, but I'm going to tell you Little now. Little did I know, though, that you were going to ask a thoughtful question. I can't wait to hear what you consider no, no, thought-provoking question. No, no, this is good. Question. This is good. I'm this ready. is a perfect. I'm ready. You know, you know, because the definition of a good hypothetical question is one that everyone is split down the middle on, that no one can really decide what the right answer is. Then you know it's a good question. If everyone yeah. goes one way or the other way, it's a weak it's too question. Easy. It's too right. easy. Yeah. Okay. So we're getting hypothetical here, Drew. This, this is Play-Doh. You, you have, yeah, all right, you have, that's good radio. He's showing me a spot on his shirt. All right, listen, what, what, what do you got, attention deficit disorder? Would you relax for a second? I'm asking hypothetical questions. I can't stand the fact that you're going to ask a question. Just relax. Some... All right. All right, you have no wife. All right, go with me. You have no kids. You're a single guy. You're single. Nothing happened to your wife or kids. They just never existed. You say, you say like that never happened to me. Like I was never single. Go ahead. All right. L l all right. Let's turn back the clock and let's say you're single. All right. All right. Now, I want you to picture the most um, repulsive female that you can conjure up. Mm. I mean, maybe a nurse. You know, maybe a nurse at the hospital. No, no names. Just picture. And I want everyone out there to picture this person. Whether you're male, whether you're female. Maybe it's someone at school. No, wait a minute. If you're Maybe a female, it's someone at work. If, if you're talking to the females and they're single. If I'm talking to the females, I want them to picture a repulsive male. Okay. Maybe it's their boss. All right, all right. Maybe it's a teacher. All right. Maybe it's a classmate. Whatever. Maybe they're clergymen. Whatever. Whatever it is. Picture the most repulsive opposite sex person that you know, that is in your environment. No, not off of oh, television. Oh, it can't be an imaginary person. Not an imaginary person. Okay. Someone you, you would work with. Someone right. you would have contact with. All right. Okay? So you, let's say this nurse. A mustache, uh, grossly overweight, some kind of uh, skin lesions. Uh, uh, you're, now you're being... Uh, uh, parts dragging as she goes you're down the hall. You're discriminating against heavy people now, so come on. All right, all right. I'm just saying aesthetically, all right, I'm not going to get in that whole thing. But all right, everyone got that person pictured? Yeah. Fine. All right, now, here is the question. Would you have sex with that person and not have anyone? No one will ever know. Not even the person. Actually, I've done that a few times. I'm not proud. But I'm saying you have sex with that person, you experience sex with that person, but then it's erased from all memory, except for yours. No one will ever know, she won't know, he won't know, that'll be that. Or, you'll never have sex with that person, but everyone will swear up and down that you did. She will think so, or he will think so. All your co-workers, the, the principal at school... It, you know, you your classmates, everyone will know that you had sex with this person, and you can never talk them out of it. Even though you didn't. Even though you didn't. Or do you just bite the bullet and go for it one time? You know what I mean? Pop the tab on a couple of tall ones and just dig in one time, and then it's gone from all memory. Now, this is a good question. Drew, what do you think? This is a good question? Yeah. What do you think? What would you do? This is a good question? What would you do? I'm so let down. What would you do? Don't mince around. What would you do? I, I don't know what I'd do. 
Come on. Well, You'd what, have what, sex what, with her. All right, I'd do that. Would you? All right. Oh, you're a single guy? And, okay, yeah. Well, yeah, right, because you wouldn't right. want to go in the hospital every day and have to deal with the stares and the looks and the whispers and all that, right? All right. All right, see, this is a good way to separate people because women usually will say, no, I wouldn't do it. Uh. I wouldn't do it. I don't care. Huh. I, it's what I know is what counts. And guys would go, uh, yeah, I, if, you know, if I was going to get teased for a while, uh, yeah, I, I'd just do it. So you sort of see the difference with the with the societal pressure. Uh, you see, see? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. see. Oh yeah, man, what a great question. That is a great question. Five minutes into the show, Drew cheat on his Call wife with a big nurse. I think that's what we got there. Hold. All right. All well, right. I want people to chime in and tell us what All they right. do. I think there's going to be a difference between the males and the females. Mickey, twenty-seven, Denver. Mickey, what's up? Hi guys. Hey. Hey. hey um, what do you think of that question? Um, I did it. You did what? I had sex with a nasty man. See, she would have done it. You did. And no one knows. And no one knows. See? No one will never know. Right. Okay, so. Now, which would you rather? Would you rather have everyone know and never had sex with him? No way. No, she'd rather do it. You'd rather do him. You I did. did it. You did it, and you'd do it again. Yes. You're not making any apologies. Nope. All right. So chalk So uh, chalk one up for the female. Uh, <laughs> this is such a worthwhile way to spend our evening. Mike, Mickey, what can we do for you? I'm, I'm so excited I got through. Yeah. Um, Guys, I'm having a problem. Yeah. yeah. I've been dating my boyfriend for a year and a half. And sex has gotten very boring. Mm. It used to be so exciting. We'd have sex three, four times a day. What's changed? The three, four part? Yeah. Well, what else has changed, though? I mean, what, is there some qualitative change in what's going on? I don't know. You can't tell? No, this is the first time I've been in a relationship in five years. Mm. Well, who, who's not initiating the sex? I mean, who's running from the sex? If anyone. You know what I'm saying? Who wants yeah. it more? He does. He wants it more. But see, he's he's not aggressive enough. He'll kind of lay there and be wishy-washy about it and not, like, take charge of it. And that really turns me off. But see, guy, guys don't always know what to do. I mean, they get mixed messages sometimes. As a guy, you know, in, in especially living in the 90s, you're told, hey, if someone tells you this or, or, or intimates to you that, nah, I, I don't want that, you better back off. Otherwise, you're, you know, you're crossing the line. I mean, are you playing hard to get? No. You, you just think he's being lethargic. You want a little more, you want a little more yeah, uh, actually, verve out of the guy. Yeah, I actually and I just said, you know, one of us needs to uh, be the aggressor here. And I don't feel like being the aggressor tonight. And he didn't get the hint. Just tonight? Yeah, I mean, you know, it kind of switches. It has to, to, to keep things active. So he's being, he's being uh, lethargic. Yeah. I mean, you, you you want, I mean, you would like, and everyone would like their sexual partner to be, to be excited about being with them. Sure. I mean, to, to go after them. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember when we first started going out, I mean, we didn't have sex for about four months. Ooh. And I think that made things really intense when it finally happened. Yeah. It, and then it, we had sex all the time. I know, but uh, this goes out to everyone. You can never use the first four months or the first year even of a relationship sexually and try to compare it to the third year or even the second year because it's just you're setting yourself up for a fall. So so what do you do? So do you just date people for a year? I, I think that's a decent plan. No, I, I, Mickey, I think... You get that, pregnant, I think, is what I, you I do. Think you start, no way. You start talking to your partner about what it is you, you need, what it is you're looking for, what gets you going, what doesn't. I mean, he can't read your mind. He can't. Yeah, I mean, the first thing you do have to communicate. Yeah, and if there's and if if that somehow ruins the fantasy for you, well, I'm sorry, that fantasy is not any reflection of reality, and not with this relationship in any event. And if there's something about the relationship that's troubling, you need to begin to communicate that. And most of this, I suspect, comes from just finding out who each other are, and you're more settling into being yourselves in your physical relationship, and you're a little dissatisfied with that right now. Now, give him an opportunity to, to come up to the plate and uh, start swinging the... See if he can get a homer. Mickey, well. is he there? <laughs> uh -huh. Is he there? No, no. He, he lives um, in a different town. And, and be, oh, very, okay. be very very tuned in to... He to spends the weekends with me. Try All to right. be careful to tune into whether or not perhaps there's been some uh, change in how you guys are feeling about each other and sort of the intensity of the relationship. And try to figure out where that's going wrong and, and work on it. Okay. Doesn't come. It doesn't. Relationships don't magically happen. They don't automatically work, and they certainly don't work over long periods of time unless you constantly 
put some work into it. All right, forget this psychological mumbo jumbo. Have you ever given him an oil massage? I mean, a real oil massage? Oh yeah. You have? Uh huh. But how long's it been? Oh, uh, ten months. Ten months. That's a long time. No, no, one, one month. month. A oh, one month? Mm-hmm. The hell am I listening to? That is not such a long time. <laughs> you, you think you should you should do- drop him, baby? I think no, it's no, time see, for. I like to see. I like to create these moods. I, you know, he'll come over and I'll, I'll right. feed him cocktails and get him drunk and I'll be wearing sexy negligee and we'll. But you know, why am I always doing it? Yeah, because he's a guy and he's a pig and he's lethargic and that's how guys work. They settle in, they get into their comfort zone. Okay. They fold back the chair, they heat up the TV dinner, they turn on the ball game, exactly. they crack the beer, they put their hands down their shorts, and they call it a life. Exactly. So why do? How do I respark that? Do I just? Do I tell him I want to leave? Yeah, I think the only way to you you got to give. You ever see those uh, emergency shows where they get the crash cart out and the paddles and they yell clear? That's what a guy needs sometimes, and the equivalent to that is threatening to leave him. I, I know yeah, it sounds like a head game. Tell him why. Tell him why, because he tell may not. Why. He not I mean, give him a chance first before you start threatening departure. That you're gonna, that you're dissatisfied with certain things, and give him an opportunity to sort of come up to speed. Okay. All right, well, Mickey. I, I've said. I I told him that. Mickey. Yeah. Mickey. We're running out of time here. I'm telling you to crank up the defibrillator, and rub some of that weird cream they put on his chest and. Get ready to shock him back into reality. This is Todd, sixteen. Todd. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Uh, hey. Hold on, Todd. Thing. Okay. Hold on a second. That is a defibrillator. That is a defibrillator. Oh man, am I good, Todd? Yeah. What's happening? Oh, first time caller, long time listener. <laughs> all right. First of all, I got to say cool. And then um, my question was, uh, I was thinking about getting either my nipple pierced or my tongue pierced. Mmm. And um, well. The artery thing in the tongue kind of scared me, and I was wondering. The what thing? Artery. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I was wondering um, if that happens. If I take it out and go to the emergency room, could it be taken care of and be okay? Well, if if you don't asphyxiate, you know, the the, the swelling can be massive and sudden. It can obstruct your airway, and it's a disaster. That's you, what worries you, me. You can't breathe through your nose at that point. It just whoosh, goes right across here. Your nose is up way up here. Right. I know, but you can't use. No, it, it goes across the airway. Yeah, but still. All this, all this in you your head like, is You could like, put a tube from your ass around your nose or something and <laughs> circumvent the throat? No, but somebody would grab you in the emergency room and put a tube down your throat into the air. And oh, they would, the okay. The, if, if you survive that long. But, that, I mean, I, there, there is, are stories trickling in all the time now about the potential disasters associated with piercing. And uh, mostly in, in the hands of incompetent uh, piercers. But if you... The tongue is the one that scares me the most. I Todd. Think there's a lot yeah. of potential for problems. Yeah, I, I agree. All right. And it, it's something you're using a lot. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know when you bite your tongue? Yeah. Like you're, you, you ever get stoned and you're eating something and you sort of lose your whole pattern of chewing and you bite your tongue and it screws you up for like a week? A couple times, yeah. Yep. <laughs> you're, you're very honest man, Todd. It's never happened to me. But imagine putting a, a bone through your tongue. I mean, what or a barbell through your tongue? I mean, imagine what that would do to the rhythm. And, and can you get that kind of piercing at your age anyway? Um, yeah. How? Um, fake ID. Use a friend's birth certificate. Nice. Uh, there are a few other ways. Beautiful, Todd. Um, and I was wondering about the nipple. A friend said that there was like nerves in there that could cause some serious damage, like to your arm. Uh, if oh. they like missed your chest altogether. Oh no. Okay. Oh, Todd. So basically, that was a load. Todd. Yeah. Do you uh do you think your nipples are an erogenous zone? Uh, I mean, as a guy. What's an erogenous? Uh, it's a it. place Let's in Nevada go. where keep they going. test, uh, where they where they keep uh, alien ships. Thanks, well, Todd. You, you guys didn't don't, see that don't, Fox special? Don't don't poke spears through yourself. Yeah, right? that's, that's right. Hit the Bible, Todd, and play <laughs> some uh, organized sports, would you, buddy? Okay. And All I, right. My second question was, uh, I read an article on Heart Rod about. They were building a Camaro with a six-speed transmission. Mm-hmm. Got 26 miles to the gallon and a 12.27 ETA. And I was wondering if you put uh, a 700 R4 automatic transmission. 12, 12.27 quarter mile. Yeah. Okay. And I was wondering if you put uh, the 700 R4 automatic transmission in. Yeah. If that would really hurt the gas mileage because it's a higher overdrive ratio, but it's an automatic transmission. Todd. Yeah. Who my Pop Larson over here? <laughs> what the hell do I care about your transmission problem? What's he talking about? He's trying to make my head explode with his <laughs> with his talk of Camaros and six speeds. Camaro has a car right now that has a six speed in yeah, it, but, but it's a V it's a V eight and the mileage isn't going to be as no. good. All right, Todd, worry about your tongue. For Christ's sake, I bet the guy doesn't even have a permit. He's already mapping out his cars. Karen, we're back in Turlock with Karen. She's twenty. Hi. Hey. I have a little. I'm a little. I'm worried about something. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I was with a guy about two years ago, and he had these white bumps on his penis, what, the head of his penis. What, what, like, what do they look like? What do you mean, Well, I didn't examine them so closely until I was with another guy about six months ago, and he had them also. And they're white. He was my boyfriend at the time. Yeah. And they were white, like, almost like, um, you know how some people get little skin folds, or I don't know what they're called, like a... It's just like their skin is coming up like a pimple almost, but it's not. But like, but you like little clogged hair follicles. Yeah. And it's symmetrical. It's yeah. All, it's like a ring around the top. No. Yeah. Okay. Those, so, that's normal. It's like a yarmulke. No, it's and like I, a. I confronted it's like what your grommet, it, except he got it, real offended. He said he's had him since he was little, but I didn't know if there was some kind of. No, it's normal. Guys get offended about that kind of penis ridicule, you he know. He got real embarrassed. I mean, he didn't storm out, did he? Yeah, he got real mad because I mentioned it over dinner, and he just got furious. Oh yeah, don't do that over dinner. Well, I don't know about over food, but it's the right thing to do not to do it when you're in the bedroom. It's to do it later when you're. Well, you know, yeah, I did it. Later yeah, you're, you're right to do that. That you know. He, he was embarrassed because I didn't know because he very sexually active and i didn't know if it was like a sexually trans did he did he wear a condom with you yeah when we had sex he okay. did but he wasn't wearing it while he was eating what no, no. okay just check well, it but well so what is it it's normal it's just that's the way that it is yeah what yeah it's just, were they uncircumcised these guys just uh the second one was uncircumcised. i think maybe it's probably a little more common uncircumcised it's just normal developments just really normal, yeah wow. okay all right they, they're sort of like the pearly penile papules but and i think i've seen I was in a dermatology clinic once where they referred to them as that, and I don't know, they're not exactly the same thing, but they're discussed the same Are they in a different place? One of them's yeah. on the shaft and one of them's right. on the head of the penis? Correct. Correct. Okay. They're Pardon right. me, Karen? Well, I have a question. Also. All right, Karen, go yeah. ahead. How right. come you don't have a woman's perspective on your show, like mm. a woman for the girls to talk to? Well, you have all these men, you should have a woman. We agree. Yeah. You're providing it now, Karen. Get anything? One. Anything you want to say? No, okay. except all those guys that's with the bumps why. on their penises should get it. The guys that what? Off. Guys that what? All those guys with the bumps on their penises should get them take them off, taken off. And don't you think guys talk way too much about their penises in general? No. What? I don't. <laughs> I, I've never heard so much. Adam Carolla doesn't talk enough about his penis. Oh, I don't. Oh no, yes he does. Well, it is kind of I a like short story, Karen. It. Uh, but the guy in general, I can't believe how much time we waste talking about that waste. I, I guess waste. it reassures guys. This is a sex show. What are we going to be talking about? Our arches? Gonna, what do people want to talk about? But I, that is so meaning. I mean, what you got to understand that the penis. You ever see a globe, Drew? A globe? A globe of the world? Of the world? Yes. Yes. Okay. The penis is like the equator for the male. It's that line that goes right around the middle. It 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 it, it encircles the entire ball. I don't understand that. I don't either. <laughs> All my references aren't great, Drew. So far tonight, none of it good. All right. Why is Do anyone ask Karen for her opinion on your, your hypothetical? Well, Karen, what do you think about my hypothetical question I posed at the top of the show? I don't know. I, you. Oh, Oh, about, oh, well, actually, I had like a 400-pound Jewish guy stalking me, and I wouldn't sleep with him for the world. You had Rabbi Kahan on your yeah, tail? It what? Was just, it was <laughs> scary. He was a stalker. And All right. Well, religion should have nothing to do with this. Unless he had one of those big beards, then that he could does. be... He Okay. All right, Karen. Oh, wait, we'll listen, I, have, I have one other thing to say. What? You've informed me on... You say guys, when they masturbate, they have they get, like, dark rings around their penises. Well, they can. I mean, any any skin that you irritate can, can hyperpigment like that. Well, because my boyfriend and I broke up, and he came down for Thanksgiving weekend, and he had... <laughs> Rings around his penis, and I figured yeah, it was going to be broken be, up. Well, but they could be normal too. I mean, he didn't have them before. He there. didn't have them before. Well, suspicious. Yes, that ring that that was a direct uh, result of the breakup, Karen. You can exactly. bet on it. All right, thanks, All right, Karen. Thanks. Good luck. Bye. All right, Drew, where do you want to go? Real quickly, this is Kevin from Chicago. He's twenty-three. Kevin. Hello. Hey. Hey. I just had a question about alcohol. Yeah. Um, and its effect. What is the physical process of for getting a blackout? You get loaded and you hit your head on the coffee table. You don't have to hit your head, but if you hit your head, you don't remember it. Right. Uh, and it, there's different theories about what causes it. I, I'm not entirely sure that everybody knows that it's actually been determined definitively what, what actually causes this, but it's uh, basically a state of anesthesia that, uh -huh. that the drug induces. Uh, some people have argued that it's mostly the amnestic effects, that it causes amnesia, so you're not really anesthetized while you're in a black You just have it knocked out of your access to long-term memory, so you don't remember anything. Plus, it's convenient, because you're usually doing something really stupid. True. Well, and it's also, when people have blackouts, it's, it's sort of a non-physiologic phenomenon. It's, it's unusual for people to drink enough to have blackouts, unless they're really 
is something going on in their relationship. So you're saying alcohol. you're saying it's a psychological thing. No, it's not. No, 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 no. Well, you I, said it's a non-physiological n- thing. No, no, it's not. Not. What I'm saying is that it's a sign that we look for in a, sort of a threshold for trying to tell whether or not somebody's an alcoholic. We worry when we hear that there are blackouts, particularly more than one. Uh, most people that have had a blackout, like, don't touch alcohol, that scares the hell out of them, and the, the, it's, it's usually a single, isolated binge. But people who are drinking regularly and also seem to have blackouts, and they don't seem to bother them too much, that's a, sort of a threshold for probability of there being alcoholism. All right, Kevin, I hope you're uh, as confused as I am. All right. Thank you. All right, we're going to be right back with Dr. Drew and me after this. Look deep into this jingle. You are getting sleepy, sleepy. Love line will be right back. You will listen. You will listen. This is Rodney Dangerfield. I'll tell you, the guys here at Loveline are the greatest. They're the best, the best in the whole world. Now, will you please untie me? Very funny older man with a beautiful younger wife, that uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Let me give those phone numbers out one more time. 1-800-LOVE-191. That number again, 1-800-568-3191. Or, of course, you can always fax us at 310 310- 854-4455. The name of the show is Loveline. Ricky Rackman is on vacation for the rest of this week. He's actually on a cruise now. Oh, he is. He left Orlando, and uh, probably it's warmed up a little bit now. Mm. He's on a cruise. Wow. Oh, well, that's lovely. Yeah. And we're sitting here in this dank place, and it's uh, just me and Drew, and I just ran into Anne in the hall, and uh, she was thinking about the hypothetical question. She did it. It was me. Oh. Oh, it's oh, Anne, pathetic. You're, you're so sick. <laughs> I'm so sorry for you. I can't hear you. She had to think of the most repugnant man she could come up with. All right, so I want to continue this. I want people to help us out with this question. All right, this is Heather from... Where's Cannon Falls? In Minnesota. Minnesota, you're 15. What's going on? 15. Well, Oof. I'm eight and a half months pregnant. You're and 15. Like, yeah. That means you got pregnant when you were probably 14 or just 15. Yeah. Oh, my God. But anyway... You I are a math expert, Drew. <laughs> yes, Heather. I have, like, this green mucus that comes out of my butthole. <laughs> and I was just wondering... what. What could that be? How's your pregnancy going otherwise? Well, they're expecting that I'm going to have a baby anytime. I've already lost my mucus plug, so anytime. You, you, wait a minute, you lost your what? Mucus plug. <laughs> your mucus plug? That's, that's coming out the I vagina. lost mine in like the ninth grade. <laughs> I should have put my initials on it. Uh, Heather, you lost your mucus plug. Yeah. I didn't know about the mucus plug. All right. What is that, Drew? <laughs> Explain Heather, that. Heather, go ahead. Heather, tell us what the mucus plug is. It's like a... Oh, bloody mucus that comes out of your vagina when before you have the baby. Yeah. And how long before you have the baby? Up to a month. All right. But it's... It, it, okay. It, it's... Like about a month. So you know, once the mucus weeks, plug yeah. is dropped, that uh, the baby can't be too far behind. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and are you having diarrhea? Is that the problem? No, I don't. It's, it's just mucus and it's green. Yeah. Are you constipated? Um, sometimes. I mean, mucus... Mucus can be associated with constipation or diarrhea. It doesn't necessarily mean there's anything inflammatory or problematic going on. Uh, I, you know, I, nothing about that necessarily means there's anything wrong unless it's associated with something else. You know, mm-hmm. your system's under a lot of stress when you're pregnant. You want any medications? Um, no. Nothing. There's no kind of uh, anti-mucral? No. Gee, I think I'll invent that, too. No. I, I just, you know, try to keep regular, you know, do, do take good care of yourself. You're getting proper prenatal care. Mm-hmm. Right. And I have another question. Yeah. Um, me and my boyfriend had sex the other day, and he, after oh. we were done, he noticed that he had, like, a sore on his penis. Oh, my God. Like, well, this guy should get some sort of, uh, some sort of, like, bronze star or something for getting involved with that whole mucus thing. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, oh, look, uh, nothing more beautiful than a pregnant woman, but, but, but this is, this is like the exorcist over here. I mean, there's stuff coming out from every orifice. No, but it was like the... This guy must be horny. This must be the horniest guy in town. <laughs> you're eight months pregnant. You've got a basketball in your belly. you got mucus flying from every direction. He's like, yeah, I need some. <laughs> Man, this guy's horny. Hang on to this guy. <laughs> this guy. Do you have any idea what that would be? It was like the skin just peeled off or something. 
No, well, I'm worried that it's herpes. I mean, that, that's what scares me. If it's an ulcer now. I don't know. It could be herpes. What does herpes you know, look like? It's like like an ulcer. Like it look, it look like all kinds of things. Really, it looks like a raw. Spot herpes of... can look like that. It could be just an irritation, something you guys generated from from friction. Uh, but Sh- should herpes... she just sit in a tub of hydrogen no. peroxide? No, for the you next should few go. See, you should call your obstetrician immediately and talk about this. You got uh, you got to call the Coast Guard too. Well, but, but I mean. <laughs> Coast Guard. I'm saying call everyone. All right. I want the president on the line, Heather. There's but I mean, trouble. you, you got to tell your obstetrician that, you, that your boyfriend showed up with his lesion. It'd be nice. It'd be appropriate if somebody were to look at that. And then you can talk to him at the same time about, or him or her, about the mucus that you're having from your rear end to make sure that's not a big deal. Uh, but this, this is craziness. I, I, you know, you've got to be followed carefully at this stage of the pregnancy. You shouldn't be like calling a radio station with these kinds of questions. You should talk to the obstetrician. You're a real doctor, Drew. I understand that, but... People but, feel comfortable talking I, that's to you. It's fine, and you should feel com- but she should feel comfortable talking... Heather, you should feel comfortable talking to your obstetrician. Heather? You really should. Yeah. Heather, if it's a boy, are you going to name it Ricky, Adam, or Drew? <laughs> Drew. You got a name picked out? Seriously. She just told you. Drew? She's are, are lying. You, are you going to get married to this guy, your boyfriend? No. And you're going to raise the baby? Yeah. Well, wait a minute. But he's still on the scene, right? Yeah. Is he the dad? Yeah. Wow. And and why why don't you plan on marrying him? And what's he still doing around if 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 you're not going to get married? Because he's annoying and I need his money. He's annoying and you need his money. <laughs> paper routes paying that well. <laughs> How old is this guy? Nineteen. Oh, the older man. Wow. And and you got you, you guys don't want to get married. No. And he doesn't or you don't. Mm, I don't. We don't talk about it. Wow. Mm. And you, he he's going to support you and the child. Mhm. All right. Well, All you're, right. You're going to need a lot of support. What do your folks think of this? Mm. Well, I'm sure they're elated, Drew. They're what? They don't think anything. They don't think it. anything. Got a 15 year old, 14 year old pregnant. Heather. Yeah. You have your work cut out for you. Take care in of life. your child better than evidently your parents have uh, seen to. <laughs> yeah, Drew. Drew is scared. They sounded like an a-hole, but uh, obviously, obviously, um, your parents may have come up a little bit short on the uh, rearing scale. Well, they just aren't aren't in, involved in her in her care and in her life. Yeah, but but uh, here's a chance. Here's a chance to fix everything, Heather. All right, Heather. Good luck. Okay. Take Bye-bye. care. This is uh, Jason Twenty. Jason, what's up? Yeah. Um. I have a problem with my girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, she's, let's see, I just got out of a relationship about a month and a half ago. And I just got into another one, and I don't know if I should be in it. You're still not over the first one? What's that? Not over the first relationship? Well, it's, it's not so much as that. I mean, I, we got together like maybe after three, day, three nights of dating. Mm-hmm. Okay. You had sex? And No. <laughs> that was about a week later. What's getting together after three nights of dating? Uh, pretty much making it like just me and her. Oh, oh, so you sort of committed to each other kind in a, of, in a non-biblical things, way. Exclusively type deal. Right. right. What's right. the question? I'm not. I'm missing. Oh, relax. I'm enjoying the setup what's here. The, what's the question though? Okay. Um, I don't know what I should do about this. Okay. She's um. Uh, okay. She, I went to go pick her up at work tonight. One sentence. What's the question? And I got there about a half hour early, and I used to work next door. Hey Jason, Drew's getting pissed. Okay. I don't know what what the deal. He he, okay, he just had a cup of coffee and he's going nuts and no, that no. whole attention deficit disorder deal or whatever. Okay, you hold have. on, I'm getting to this. All right. Yeah, we've been holding on. Let's go. Okay, so I, I'm working. Okay, I used to work next door and I was over there having a cup of coffee with a friend that used to work there, that with a friend that works there, and it's a girl. She's very over jealous of this girl, and all I'm doing is talking to her. Uh huh. And she says, "Well, I see the way you look at her." Yeah. All right, all right, Jason, Jason, let let me just backtrack for a second here because no one knows what the hell you're talking about. I don't even think you do. You had a girlfriend. You've okay. been broken up for, hold on, you've been broken up for a month and a half. Okay, yeah. You're on with a new girl now. Okay. This new girl you slept with after a week and made an emotional commitment to after three dates? Yes. Okay, now you're still having feelings for the old girlfriend, which is six weeks old. No, 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 no. He just looked at somebody, I, and I, she said, I don't like girl. the way you look at girls. Forget the other girl. All right. I'm just trying to figure out okay. what I can do about my present girl. The new girlfriend is getting jealous She's on you. She's totally getting over jealous of possessive her Possessive and over She says, I know the way, I see the way you look at her. And I'm not looking at her. I'm just a talkative person. That's crazy. How long have you been with her? About maybe, um, God, 
couple few weeks. Few weeks. All right. And you've you've sort of committed. Uh, at least you have a verbal agreement, if not a written one, with her. Yeah. And you've consummated the relationship. Exactly. Okay. And she's getting a little possessive. Yes. And she's a little insecure. Right. I guess. Yeah, but it's kind of crazy insecure. It's like you know, I, I don't know. Uh-huh. If it has, I don't know if it has to do with she's very shy. Well, she's highly insecure. You either have to hang in there and be extremely supportive and reassuring to her, uh, or you know, set some limits on these behaviors and just you know, look. This is ridiculous. But let's talk about this for a second, Drew. You know, so often I think couples argue over what what the level of appearance problem. I mean, the thing, the face value problem, when it's not that. Meaning some girl walks by at the coffee shop, you happen to look up as she's walking by, your girlfriend accuses you of ogling her, and an argument breaks out. But it's not about the girl. It's not about the girl at the coffee shop. It's about your girlfriend and her insecurity. Right. Or it's about you right. not giving her what she wants Correct. and making her feel secure. Right. And that's what couples need to talk about. Right. Forget I, about the girl toting the mocha. No, right. I do give her... I Al- do although give this her girl sounds may, like she may be a little bit... I, when I use yeah, the term crazy, she, she, I mean chaotic, too much, excessive. Uh, it's just too much. They've been dating a few weeks, and he's not allowed but, to look at somebody. But maybe, maybe Jason has betrayed her trust no, somehow. No, I, ha- I have not. I've been totally faithful, and all I'm doing is sitting down talking to a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, that w- works at and the place. And she gets right threatened. Right? Okay, I mean, you can be physically face- faithful and still jerk people around emotionally, you know. But I've given her security. I mean, okay, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Jason. Well, just see what just tra- see what happens when you when you try to reassure her and uh, make her feel secure. Yeah. If, she, if she is inconsolable, then then that's something's it, wrong. It took me an hour afterwards of leaving there to yeah. get it out of her. Well, All right, so, so, sounds a Jason, little. Jason, you got your work cut out for you, buddy. Okay. This doesn't sound okay. like a long. I, I, I wouldn't tolerate too much of this because it I, is excessive. I really. want to comment on your question earlier. Yes, yeah. right. the hypothetical question. I have done it, and no one knows a damn thing about it. All right, in the the question was, do you sleep with the most repulsive person you can think of from work or school, or do you not sleep with that person and have everyone swear that you did and you can't talk them out of it? You say, uh, Jason, you say yes. I would say um, I would not sleep with that person and let everybody think what they want. Everybody oh. at your school, everybody at your work. I don't care. Let them think what they want. I know the truth. Oh, don't, play, don't pull that holier-than-thou crap on no, me, Jason. honestly, that's how I feel. All right. All right. Good luck. All right. Chalk, See one, chalk one up for the guys. That's right. It's Patrick, 25. Patrick. Uh, yep. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I just had a question for uh, Dr. Drew. Yes, sir. Yeah. When I was uh, at my other job, yeah. one of the guys there told me about uh, vitamin E mm-hmm. pills, mm-hmm. and he said if you took a bunch of them, like 15, 16, that you could, uh, and a couple hours later, when you had sex, you'd you'd uh, you'd, you'd stay hard for like days. Did you ever try that? No, I was wondering if it's bad for you to take uh, Is it bad for you? I, I don't know of any specific syndromes associated with excessive vitamin E. Now, is that cod liver? Is vitamin E mainly, uh, mainly uh, derived from cod liver? I honestly don't know. I, uh, oh, Jesus, Doc. You that's an do easy one. Yeah. Is it? Why don't you read a little bit before the show instead of just waltzing in here? I don't know what's in cod liver. Cod liver, yeah, it's oil. It's fish oil in those yeah, well, vitamin E things. No. Or is that A and, a no. and, a and D? No, fish oil is fish oil. Yeah, well, fish oil has that's certain vitamins acid. in it. No, it's certain specific acids. All right, I'm going to bust your chops as soon as I find out the answer to this one. Right. Vitamin E, anyone who knows about vitamin E, call Vitamin E is vitamin E. Vitamin E is vitamin E. So and, uh, you can't overdose on vitamin E? Uh, well, I, I can't say that. I'm just not aware of what, 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 what a large you, dose would do. I know it would not do what you're suggesting it should do. No, I didn't All think right. it would either, but that's what he told me. All right, forget Did it. Did you try it? Do it. it doesn't sound no. like it's probably going to be good for you. Well, it couldn't hurt. No. It makes your skin soft. All right. See you, Patrick. Drew and I will return for a little more love line right after this. Hello, this is my dog. His name's Dave. Sit, sit, stay. Roll over. Roll, roll. No, Dave, no. Love line will be right back. Stay. Here we are. More Loveline, more Drew, more Adam, more sick, 
twisted, perverted thoughts and opinions. Let me give out that phone number real quick, 1-800-LOVE-191. That number again, 1-800-568-3191, or... Fax. We haven't had faxes yet tonight, huh? Well, I don't know. Maybe they're coming in, but but uh, they just haven't been brought into the booth here. Uh, fax number 310-854-4455. Again, uh, if you miss the uh, top of the show, I was giving a hypothetical question, which you're... Which Drew sort of backed out of. I, I, I think out. he sort of copped out. I cop out. I was just disappointed. You really yeah. built it up like yeah. it was going to be a I great didn't... philosophical question, something that we could really learn from and grow from. Oh, and instead, I don't know what the hell that was all about. True. But all right. Uh, me, no, Drew. I was uh, emotionally prepared for you to take the weenie route <laughs> on that answer, which and you did not disappoint me. Let me give the hypothetical question one more time, very quickly, for those of you who weren't around when I when I said it last. What, what would you do, by the way? What I do? I would have sex with the person, and not. You take the weenie way out. Yeah, but mine would be a macho kind of win, be a larger weenie way out. I'm thinking. Let me give the hypothetical question one more time, real quick. Think of the most uh, repulsive person you can come up with, maybe emotionally or physically, make them be at your work or at your school, place where you spend a lot of time, and then think, would you want to have sex with them once and have nobody know, including the person, or not have sex with them, and everyone swears up and down you did, and there's no talking them out of that. I would do it, I, because I, I'm, you know, I'm an atheist, and I'll just bite the bullet. Right. Just 20 minutes of hell. Hell, who knows? Maybe I enjoy it. And uh, that way I won't have to face the stares and the ridicule at work the next day. Fair enough. Fair enough. Drew this would is, do it too, by the way. Big is, disgusting this is, nurse. Uh, this is, <laughs> this is <laughs> Debbie. Debbie's going to tell us about the vitamin E thing. Right? Debbie. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys that yeah. um, vitamin E and vitamin A are fat soluble. Right. So um, you can actually poison yourself if you... Uh, you can't poison yourself? No, you can. Well, vitamin A, commonly people, they can get a lot of liver problems from that. Yeah. But I've never seen a syndrome of vitamin E overdose. Well, it is fat-soluble, so it does get stored in your in your body fat. So if you do overdose, like, um, for example, if you take vitamin C, you can take as much as you want because it's water-soluble. Right. And you can, it just goes out in your urine. Yeah, but there are many, there are lots of water-soluble pharmaceutical agents that will kill you if you take too much of them. I mean, what, what... What is it? What is the syndrome of vitamin E overdose? What What are the consequences? Well, um, I just know that it's just not good to take. I would agree, it's not it good. I don't know why, though. It, it can get stored in your body and. And what? You just, you just have Drew. You just she's have 19 and works at a Circle oh, okay. K. All you, right, would okay, you stop right, grilling right. her? All right, I just wanted. wanted it's you, not you, Marcus Welby, hey, Drew. Look, it's just, Debbie I'm from Simi Valley. I'm looking for information, Debbie. And did, did you hear anything about this uh, erectile function thing that guy was mentioning? No, I've never heard. I've never heard that either. Debbie, okay. what about the? Wait a minute. What about I the just, hy I hypothetical? Just, oh no! What about your fish oil thing? I just wouldn't recommend it. Just what do you know about fish oil, Debbie? Um, I think it's. I think. It I think is, it is. It does say that on thing. Just like calcium is. Um, it shells, like, right? Yeah. I mean, even though it is calcium, it tells you where it comes from. All right. And yeah. The same so thing with vitamin E. It's, I think it's derived from cod liver oil. Yeah. That's the liver of a cod. That's what I think. I think that's what it says in the bottle. And Debbie, what about the hypothetical? I have a hard time believing that, but I. But oh, maybe. for Christ's sake, Drew! What am I sitting here doing, I lying think it, to it you? It says it on the bottle. What do I come up with, cod liver anyway? Do where I just did you come up with that? Where did you come up Off with that? Off the side of the bottle. You did not. Did yes. you really? Did you really? Bite into a vitamin yeah. E thing. It smells like cotton. You'll belch up. It'll smell like you you, you ate at the H salt. <laughs> hey, Debbie. Yeah. Did you hear the hypothetical question? Yeah. What do you think? Um. You do the big scary guy and no. not have anyone know? No. You face the stares of all the co-workers? Yes. Everyone. Definitely. Everyone for the rest. Every morning when you walk into work, they're all looking and laughing. Yes. They're laughing at Debbie, and now you know what, Debbie? Tell me. They want some, too, because they figure, hey, if Debbie's going to do this guy, why not me? No. Yes. He's a pig. He's a pig. He's a and pig, she, man. And she did that pig, so why can't I have a help and a love? No. Yes? No, no. All right, I'm going to get you to break eventually. Good luck, Debbie. Debbie. Good night. Thanks, Debbie. This is Chris, 15. Chris. All right. Hey. Um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yes, sir. Um, I, was one, I heard that when you uh, smoke weed through... 
uh, aluminum, like mm-hmm. most Down stems are made out of aluminum, that it can give you Alzheimer's disease. Well, what you're hearing is some conclusion that somebody derived from the fact that in the pathologic changes of the brain that occur in Alzheimer's, there are often found aluminum deposits. And people leaped to the conclusion, therefore, that aluminum caused the degenerative process. There really is no good evidence for that. For instance, people on dialysis, Mm -hmm. kidney dialysis, are given massive doses of aluminum through certain kinds of uh, antacids, phosphate binding agents, and their aluminum levels go through the roof. They do not get Alzheimer's at any higher rate than anybody else. Right. People that drink a zillion Diet Cokes a day do not get Alzheimer's, do not no, get dem- dementia. They get the time. AIDS is what they get. There is, And I will guarantee you, and this I can say with great certainty, that the marijuana itself will have a much greater impact, bad impact on your health, than any potential problem of smoking through the aluminum pipe. But what about the paint that you're smoking off the bud can that you've crushed and fashioned into a makeshift hash pipe? Isn't that bad? I imagine. Okay. Chris. Uh, Chris. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna ingest pot, I suggest you do it in the brownie form and stay away from all that aluminum stuff. Okay. <laughs> all right. No, don't do any pot, Chris. I don't want to get any letters. Why the brownie form? Well, you know, well, you're not you're not stinking up the room, and you know, you're not smoking aluminum. And the thing you about know. brownies is you can overdose easily. You can. You can take big doses and not be aware of it. it. Takes a long time for it to get into your system. It's expensive. But here's the beauty of the pot brownie: not only are you getting high, but you're eating at the same time. You're killing two birds with one stone. Brian, Chicago, 25. Yeah, guys, I had a couple questions for you. Has the weather improved out there yet? Uh, no, it's really nasty. Rub it in. Um. Anyway, I was I really mainly wanted some advice. All right. Um, I had a relationship with a girl for around uh, four and a half years. Mm. And um, it was, I guess, for the first three and a half years, it was really great. I mean, um, I really was her first lover. And um, How old was she? I'd say when we started dating, she was 17. How old were you? And I was 19. Mm-hmm. And, what do you think uh, the chances of a relationship in that hmm? age group going on? Uh... Well, like in the in the 1830s, you mean, or now? <laughs> now. Zero. Okay. But go ahead. So anyway. Because um, everyone we, died when they are 35, so who we cares? We were together for around um, four and a half years. Uh-huh. Uh, and everything went pretty smooth, but p- she was, like, pushing towards uh, moving out, getting a place together and all this kind of um, stuff. Mm, that and I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I she was 20 sure. at that time, right? Yeah, exactly. I wasn't sure how I could uh, support them. I was still with my folks. Yeah. But we went together until I was... Uh, wait a minute. Wait. Well, let's so backtrack for here. a second here, Brian. Who's the them? Huh? Are you counting you and her as a them, or is there a third? You uh, said I, mean, I don't know back, how it's... Back then. Oh, back then. Oh, back then. Back then. Back then. Mm, we went please. together until I was like 23 or whatever. Right. And um, I, I don't know if she was getting fed up with the situation, but she was getting ready to leave me. She didn't know if she loved me anymore because I wouldn't do these things. All right. And finally, I just said, you know, I really care about you. You know, what do you want? And she said she wanted, you know, to move out to try like a big city and stuff. So, hey, Chicago, that's why I'm here. Move out from where? I moved from a very small town by St. Louis. Okay. So what's the question, Brian? Well, anyway, um, I moved. She didn't come. It didn't work. Uh, The stress was put on the relationship because her mom said, you know, you have to marry him if you move. Mm. So we broke up. Okay. About a year later now. She calls me up, and she wants to come to Chicago. She wants me to help her, and um, she would like to kind of get back together. And she's moved in with me, and things are, are very odd. It's definitely not even close to what it was like before. The magic is gone. Well, it's not gone for me. I still really love her. I still really care well, about the her. Well, ma- you got the one. That's why the magic is still there for you. But uh, she has the hat and the, and the rabbits out of it. Well, it's like... It's like everything has been going like really slow, and I don't know. I don't know what's wrong. I mean, she moved in with me. And she's sleeping in the same bed. How long has she been there? She's been here around three months. I mean, it just it just sounds very bizarre to me that they would go from being broken up to being living together again, as though the relationship should somehow be precisely as it was when it was at when it was at its peak. Yeah, like and it you was, could just go on with like things. it was frozen for a year right, and right. They just thawed it out. Terribly in a day. unrealistic. I mean, you well, both we, have been through a lot, changed a lot, a lot of leftover feelings, a lot of process to go through. You guys are going to sit have to sit down, have a lot of talk, a lot of you have to well, romance her a little bit, get some some dynamics back in this relationship. Uh, I, I try I try to talk to her, but she's um, very disinterested. She like 
gets very closed off. And she well, doesn't want to talk she can't it. do that if this relationship is going to survive. Yeah. Right. Very simple. It's yeah. just it's, She either wants it to get better or she wants it to fall apart. And All it's right. up to her. All right, Brian. Well, it's up to you, too, but I mean, it's up to her as far as this defense. Brian, it's goes. your apartment. It's your sofa. Sit her down, turn on your stereo, and talk to her. And we're going to be back right after this. Meanwhile, halfway across the city, in a small fish market in Chinatown. Excuse me, could I get some fish? In the meantime, Loveline will be right back. I talk way too much. Oh yeah, this that that you speak the truth, my I, friend. That's the first thing of accuracy you've said tonight. I still have enough in me to tell you to shut the hell up, Drew. I got a fax here. That voice you heard, the annoying voice, was Drew, the voice of reason, the guy who has a degree and feels he can rub it in everyone's face. The pathetic voice you hear on the other side is the voice of me, Adam Carolla, and the voice you don't hear is the voice of Ricky Rackman who is uh, doing, uh, like, the Lombada on, uh, on a cruise on a cruise somewhere right now and having the time of his frickin' life while we're sitting oh, here in rain, although we this. didn't eat it. What? Huh? Look at this. Have, uh, the pills are derived from cod liver oil. Yes. Yes, total vindication as usual. We just got a fax that uh, confirms my cod liver oil statement about 20 minutes ago in vitamin E. Total vindication. K. Sean. All right, Drew? All right. Enough said. Let me read another quick fax here. And this is what I was referring to about talking too much. Hey, Adam, I was wondering about hairy asses being normal. <laughs> I, I heard that you have a hairy ass. So do a lot of other guys. Here's what I'm wondering. Did you hear this from me, or is this kind of word on the street kind of thing? I mean, were you talking to Huggy Bear, like slipping slip 20 bucks? Yeah, word is, Adam's got a hairy ass. Jeez, you talk so about pathetic. it every night. Do I? Yes. You either, say, you either talk about it sweating or being hairy. Am I right, ladies? They're, they're back there making faces. <laughs> and it's just projectile vomited onto Mike the Engineer. Mike, you talked I'll... about shaving your ass last night. I, oh, I was kind of oh, shocked. Did? Yeah, you did. Oh, did you not? Christ. <laughs> back me up on this. Anything for a freaking ratings point. So, uh, anyway, the facts continues. Uh, I was wondering if guys in uh, movies must have to shave their ass or something. I'm thinking maybe they do, too. I mean, there's a lot of guys waving their ass around the screen. You know, Harvey Keitel, Mel Gibson, whoever. And their ass is always like a like an eagle's head. It's like a couple of dolphins next to each other. What is that? What? I can't hear you, I Anne. think they wax it. Wait, they wax their ass? They don't ass? shave it, yeah. Wax, yeah. definitely. Wax? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're laughing like, oh, how funny is he? You think Harvey Keitel's getting his ass waxed? Sure. Really? Sure. Jeez, i got to look into that. Uh, anyway, I don't like having a hairy ass, so what should I do about it? Well, do you like Harvey Do you like though? Harvey Keitel? <laughs> and shave your ass. And, and i got a question for you, No, Andrew. you can't ask it oh, yet. You have I'm to do sorry. a break. Here. i got it going. We'll be back in ten seconds. Be arrested very quickly for... I would you say... Arrested and put a natural history museum or something. Depends on how much hair are we talking. Well, I'm not talking... Like furry? Furry? Yeah, I don't know what the I don't know what the different levels of hairdom are, but yeah. Well, show me. I'm not talking about like uh, slash from Guns N' Roses. You want me to draw my pants? Yeah, I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, come on, come on! No. Now, anyway, you want me to put it up against the glass, or can oh. I just turn around? Oh. Seriously. I gotta make a phone call. You really? <laughs> yeah, I do. Go ahead, go ahead, do your thing. Well, how can call. I? How can I? No, it's okay. Are you I'm okay? gonna go. I'll go back. Or You'll go back. <laughs> Just to get him to stop. You're saying yeah, that. Thank, thank you. you man. I Anne really, it. Anne really made a crucial decision. Kind of like the hypothetical question. What would you really rather do? Have a repulsive man show you his hairy ass, or have everyone think that he saw you? Okay. All right, All right good Drew, Can we get Please. back to the yeah, phones yeah, now? Yeah, sure. This it's Amy. not that bad. Amy, 17. Amy, what's I going on? I do look good nude, Hi, ladies. I have a question for Dr. Drew. Yes, ma'am. Go right ahead. Um. For the past three months, I've been getting my period like every 12 to 13 days, mm -hmm. and I just don't understand why it's never happened before, and I mean, I feel perfectly fine. Are they normal periods when they come? No, they're they're very, very light, and they last like two days. Is the, is the, one, is the one that yeah. would be falling 
in between cycles different than the one that would normally come on the cycle? Um, would, would you cut it out? I want to so show Anne. Like, okay. So I get my period like twice a month, right? And they both be the same. They're the same. Okay, right. both times. Right. Um, there are a lot of different things that can... That can this is... I, I'm trying to concentrate here, guys. <laughs> all, all of a sudden, all, what is happening here? Explain this. Uh, I pulled my shirt up and put my back to the window so Anne could see that I had a clean, a baby smooth back. A beautiful back. back. Beautiful back. Yeah. Kind of muscular, nice. too. All right, all right. Uh -huh. Amy, Amy. And then Mike the Neanderthal engineer pulled his shirt up like some kind of nut, nutcase I'm over there. I'm bringing my wax tomorrow And with he me. is covered like a... Freaking saber-toothed tiger. He is like something out of the Ice Age. Like you must be dying of heat. You're like a mastiff over there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Amy. Uh -huh. It's very common for people your age to have lots of irregularity to their period. Almost okay. anything can set it off. It's, it's sort of thrown under the umbrella term of hypothalamic pituitary Dis access dysfunction or memory okay. Well, right. it's really odd because I had my period since I was 10 and uh, it's uh, Hold on, hold on. But there are a lot of things that can sort of trigger that. Weight loss, stress, medications, changes in your mm -hmm. sexual activity. She had a period when she was 10? Isn't that, isn't that That's kind of early, early on? Early. Does that mean you could get pregnant from that point on? Probably uh, not right away, but <laughs> a year or so after that, yeah. Really? Yeah. So, so Amy, anything like that going on? Any what? Medication, no, stress, no. weight loss. No. Nope. Like, you know, excessive uh, physical exertion. Nope. You're Actually, I've been like more than anything. I've been mellowing out a lot more, so I don't understand what it could possibly be. Well, it can it can it can be ovarian cysts. It can be endometriosis. I mean, there's just a myriad of things it could be. If you're concerned, go see the doctor. Get checked. It could be thyroid condition. I mean, almost anything you can imagine can affect your period. It's it's, it's sometimes for some people very delicate cycling that can be disturbed by. You know, even changes in your daily routine, and anything that stresses you could potentially affect it. <coughs> but it doesn't necessarily mean there's a medical problem. It might mean there is. If you're otherwise feeling well, it's unlikely. Get it checked out just to be sure, okay? Okay, All thanks. Right. Good luck. Bye. Thanks, Amy. Steve, Steve from Glendale. Steve, what's going on? Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey, I must tell you, um, like, I love your show every thanks. night. Thank you. Thanks. Listen to it. I live in Glendale. <laughs> you do? I do. All right. But you like it? You got a stalker now, Drew. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like Glendale. You do? You just tell me it was a hell pit uh, uh, during the commercial. No, Chevy Chase Canyon. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> That's why you're not funny. All yeah. right, Steve. Yeah, um, I got a problem with my girlfriend. Yeah? Yeah, um, I've been going out with this girl for a year and a half. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, our relationship is very stable. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, we're both of us were in love a lot. And but... the problem happened last night. I mean, I went to pick up my wallet because I left it in their house, right? You, you you went back to her house to yeah, get your wallet? Yeah. How how long after you'd been there? Huh? You'd been there earlier that day? Or? Yeah, like two hours for Okay, like, all right. Trying to get yeah. a timetable here. Establish a motive, yeah. And, you know, like, I picked it up. I did my thing. It came out. Mm -hmm. I was ready to go back home. And I saw my girlfriend's mom coming out mm -hmm. and taking a quick look at my car, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I didn't know what was that about, but next day, my girlfriend called me all crying and telling me how could I cheat her, cheat on her. I'm like, what? What the hell are you talking about, you know? So, like, uh, and she, what she told me was that I, I, her mom saw me, like, with another girl, another girl in my car. I'm like, what? That didn't happen, you know? But then she hung up, like, crying. She said the mom, the mom, like, did a double take on your car while it was yeah. parked out there. And my, my car windows are, like, dark. So right. So hardly seeing it. Right. Right, and your mom, the mom probably saw her like her own reflection or something. Yeah, whatever. Right. And I understand their position because um, she was growing up in, like, under a strict family. Right. She was, like, growing up to be obey I mean, obeying her parents. Uh, let me just go out on a limb here. Mom's not nuts about you? And No, I'm, I think I'm qualified. Oh, well, you think, sure, everyone's qualified <laughs> in their own minds. But uh, mom's not, mom, I mean, how do you and mom get along? Because I, it seems to me that if mom really liked you, yeah, she, she wouldn't be making these unfounded accusations. Oh, she would have stopped and said, hi, how are you? She saw you <laughs> out there. Uh, I, you know, I still love her. I don't approach her, but I don't know how. All right, so y you're, you're totally innocent here, right, Steve? Yeah, uh, innocent. Nobody in that car of yours? No. Nope. Okay. She, y you don't think you could explain this to the girlfriend who you've shown love? And and who you've who who you've nurtured and who you've showed caring compassion <laughs> for you don't think you could explain that to her? 
thing is, uh, we go to different school. First oh, of well, all. that's different. And first of all, when I call her, I always her parents get the phone. I don't know why. It's like, I called, like, last time, one thirty in the morning, and they got it, and they're like, what are you calling for? And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I hung up. <laughs> what are you calling at one thirty in the morning on a school night <laughs> for? No, it was Saturday night. Wait a minute. Was... I thought she was going to be alone. I thought you said it was last night. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right, listen, Steve, you, you sound a little shaky at best. I got to tell you, here's my take on the situation. Drew, you tell me what you think. Listening. Mom is a little suspicious yeah. about Steve. And when people have suspicions and, and sort of when they predetermine things, it's easy to see things. It's easy to create things. Right. Your mom was, her mom was looking for something. And when she went out and she saw your Honda out there with the darkened in windows and saw a little uh, light reflection or something, she thought she picked up one of the Hee Haw twins out in the passenger wow. seat, because that's how moms work. So you're not impressing this woman. She is not giving you the benefit of the doubt. Nope. No. So you must be, uh, you know, these 130 calls aren't helping, Steve. You have to tell your girlfriend, listen, this is, I'm not dating your mom, I'm dating you. You have to explain to her, use your best sympathetic voice that there's absolutely no one in the car. And then, after you've solved that problem, you have to work on impressing mom and not having her come after you with these allegations. Oh. All right, and Steve? And maybe write your girlfriend a letter, too. Let her, let her oh, be able to muse a little bit about what it is you really feel. Good luck, yeah. Steve. Just yeah, the truth, you. baby. Brandy, look at, the, look at where she's calling from. Wow, she's calling from uh, Star Prairie in Wisconsin. Yep. Yeah. What is Star Prairie? That's a it's yeah. a gay cowboy bar. No, it's a little hick town. Oh, okay. All right, I need some advice, badly. Yes. All right, I've liked this guy. Well, it's been almost two years, mm -hmm. and I guess I can honestly say I love him. And I've tried talking to him about relationships, but wait, wait, you've been dating this guy? No, so? we've never dated. You've known each other. Yeah, and I've. I've liked him, and I've wanted to go out with him. And why hasn't, haven't... Is this Joey Lawrence, by the way? And why hasn't he been willing to go out with you? Well, I tried talking to him about a relationship. Yeah? And he always says something like it wouldn't work, or... How old is he? Um, 15. All right. So he's not interested in a relationship with you? No, but right. almost every time we're together, he wants to fool around. <laughs> and... Gee, what a surprise. <laughs> And Even in Star Prairie, guys are the same. I think if we got a call from uh, the moon. Saturn yeah. that uh, the Martian women would be complaining about their pain-in-the-ass Martian boyfriends. That is, the, that is the nature of the beast. <laughs> that, they, that they can have these physical relationships, not A, not be concerned about the harm they could bring to bear on the individual they're focusing their physical affections. Oh, yeah, you and could smother her. And B, right, he wouldn't, he wouldn't even notice it. No. And B, have absolutely no kind of emotional connection, and be completely unaware that the woman can be completely physically, or excuse me, emotionally enraptured. But you know, the great rap is, is uh, yeah, I can come over four or five nights a week for some sex, but uh, <clears throat> relationship, uh, I don't think that would work. What but a rap. I like him a lot, and basically, I guess I feel like he's using me. He is. But I can't say no to him because if I you love say, him so if much. You, if you say yes to him, you are just setting yourself up for incredible amounts of pain. Yeah. Have enough self-respect to say no to this. I know it's got to be hard for you. It is and it's, hard. It, and I, and what, what women can't accept, particularly women your age, that men can be physically intimate and not have any emotional connection with them. you got to accept it that they can. They can have absolutely no emotional experience whatsoever when they're physically intimate. Well, mm. his brother Jeremy is my best friend. Yeah. And Jeremy's tried talking to him, finding out, you know, what's wrong, what's missing. And he just, he doesn't listen, and he said it just won't work, and that's all well, the more. He, he may not know. He's only 15, 16. He may not know what, what's making it, you know, his emotional world And Brandy, work. it's it's not like you're some consumer digest, and he's trying <laughs> to figure out the best refrigerator. I mean, it's not always something that breaks down to uh, what's the most cost-effective or something. These are affairs of the heart. I mean, either either you feel that or you don't. If you don't, you can't really talk someone into it by, you right. know, just being, hey, let's be practical here. We both we're both stuck in Star Prairie. We're we're rubbing <laughs> on each other three nights a week. You know, we both love married with children. So why don't we make make it a life? I mean, if it ain't there, it ain't there. And Brandy, you're 16, and right now you don't think it's going to be there with anybody but this guy. But believe me, there's going to be ten more guys who come down the road and try to pull the same crap. 
you'll end up marrying one of them, and that'll be your life. And here's Dave. He's in San Diego. He's going to tell us more about the vitamin E ah, overdose. Dave, yes. Hey, how you guys doing? Good, yes. Dave. Tell us. Well, vitamin E mega doses can actually cause thrombophlebitis, which is blood clotting and inflammation of the blood vessels. Hmm. Mm. I, I, I'm going to press even a little harder. Deep venous thrombosis? Is that what we're talking about? Thrombophlebitis. Thrombophlebitis. But thrombophlebitis can be a pretty benign kind of a condition. But not venous? Uh, but deep venous thrombosis is, is, can kill you. What's that? The, the thrombophlebitis can be in superficial veins, and it can be very benign. It can be, right. it can be nothing, but deep venous thrombosis can kill you, and I'm just wondering if it, if it can also cause deep vein thrombosis. Venus, goddess of thrombosis that you are. So, so you can, let's put it this way. It can cause thromboembolic disease. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you. Hey, Dave, what are you, pre-med? Uh, actually, I'm a pharmacy technician. Ah. Hey, can you score me some quaaludes, dude? Thanks, Dave. Dave's got no answer to that. I, who, who would? <laughs> this is uh, Arnie, 17. Arnie, what's going on? Well, it starts like this. I got a little brother. He's eight years old. Yeah. And recently I've caught him several times inserting multiple things into his anus. Like, now, like what? Well, I've caught him squatting on crayons and just sticking his little G.I. Joe guys up there in that. And, uh, I mean, it's gotten to the point where I've had to hide my toothbrush, all right, because I don't know what to think, I mean, you know? Arnie, did you see Toy Story? Because there was a very controversial scene there involving one of the little uh, army men where, oh, maybe they cut that out. Oh, that was in the well, director's Mr. Potato shot. Head does some pretty weird stuff. Mr. Potato Head got lodged in someone's ass? <laughs> he does some weird things with his mouth when he takes it off. And... Yeah, but that's not the same as getting pushed up someone's rectum drill. Right. I hope you're not saying that. All right, Arnie. So Arnie, this guy's putting all if he sorts were, of if stuff. If he were... Two to four years old, I, I would say that that's not so abnormal. Okay. And it's kind of peculiar to go on until age eight. So, do you think there's been like some sexual abuse or something? No, I'm. I mean, I know my parents and all. I mean, as far as my upbringing and all, I mean, there hasn't been anything like that. And I just don't really get. I don't want to like bring it up to my parents because you should bring it up to your parents. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, if your parents would want to know, and and it may or may not mean anything. It may just be innocent exploration, and uh, you know. Just because it's a little age inappropriate doesn't mean it's necessarily a sign that something terrible has gone on. Uh, but it's just something that if I were as a parent, I would want to know that and give it, yeah, have an opportunity to, to look into it. Well, you'd kind of want to know, but you wouldn't be waiting in line No, to you know. don't want to know that anything potentially could be wrong with your kids, but something is. I, at least as a parent, myself as a parent, I, I want to <coughs> know and, and get on it. Larry, have you look. seen the salad tongs? No, I don't know where they are. I mean, it's a pretty strange fetish. You can't argue with that. Yeah. But, See, know. Arnie, my only concern, other than uh, and what what Drew said is right, you know, he could just be, you know, into this kind of stuff. But, I mean, my only concern is that some, you know, camp counselor or some priest or, or some P.E. coach right. or something got hold of him, right. did something weird to him, and now he's acting out in some right. weird way because it's sort of a, a sodomizing kind of well, kind of thing. Or, or it's, just, it's an acting out, potentially. And that, All and right. That, and that's what I would, as a parent, want and a that, chance yeah, to Yeah, that's explore. what you want to worry about, yeah. right? I mean, would you really want to know that your kid's doing this? Arnie. Thing, honestly? Well, I would Arnie. if it meant that he had I been would wanna, molested. No, I would want to know whatever the hell my kids were doing, if it was something that I could potentially help them with. But do you want to sit there and think, where did I go wrong where my kid is inserting whatever he's No, wait, doing. Arnie. Arnie, you want to, let me, let, let me tell you as a parent okay. that I would be terribly upset if somebody knew something and didn't point it out to me and give me a chance to help that child deal with whatever it is. As a parent, you don't want anything to be wrong with your kids, but if you're a good parent, you're going to you're gonna begin to struggle with whatever it is that you can do to help a child. Right. And if you don't know about it, you can't help them. How exactly are you going to go about helping your kid with this? I mean, an eight-year-old? Yeah. I, I, personally, what would I do? Yeah. I, mean, I would consult with a psychiatrist the next day, immediately. Really? And, I, and, the, and the psychiatrist may tell me, that's age appropriate. That you know, twenty percent of kids do that. It's no big deal. And what, what? Usually, the kinds of questions the psychiatrist would ask is, "What else is going on? Okay. What have you noticed? Any other behavioral disturbances with the child? How's he doing at school? What's going on with his peer? I mean, there are a lot of other things that need to be explored potentially. And it's probably it could be nothing, but I would want the opportunity to check it out. Okay. All right. All right. And then uh, I'd like to comment on your your uh, hypothetical, question? yeah, hypothetical question. All right. Now, is this an opportunity? I mean, kind of like hate banger. I mean, am I? Do I have to get like intimate with her and no? I mean, because I do not want this bloated, gassy, you know, discolorful, warded vet, you know, on me, rubbing her on her my face and that. I mean, I'm not into that whole thing. 
but I mean, just the chance. No, you you don't have to buy her a corsage, Arnie. You just have to have sex. Just have to have sex. All right. Well, I guess if nobody found out with it, I mean, I've got somebody in mind particularly. Okay, you'd do it, wouldn't you? I don't. I, uh, okay, good man. No, I'm putting you down in the yes column. Thank you, Arnie. Nope. Oops, sorry, Arnie. <laughs> this is Shannon uh, up Northern California, twenty. Hey, how are y'all? Very good. Good. Um, well, I was just calling because I have like this really weird. Situation. Palo Alto. Are you in Stanford? It, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Actually. Ooh. Um, but people here are a little weird too. Um, at the at the university? Yeah. Why? Huh? Well, I just I was the situation is going to sound like it came off Melrose Place, but um, anyway, uh, I was, I've been dating this guy. Well, we started dating about this time last year, and then I was away for the summer, and and he started seeing um a friend of mine. Um, and so, like, we broke up or whatever because he's dating this other girl. And I tried to be all cool with it when I came back because I knew both of them and just tried to be mature about it. And anyway, um, so they broke up because he thought she was kind of weird after a while. And after a couple months, we got back together. That was about a week ago. Mm. And she found out about it, and she, like, slashed his face open with her car keys. And, like, I know her well, and, I mean, he and I are dating, and I don't know how to handle the situation at all. <clears throat> it's just totally She weird. attacked him with her car keys. Yeah, like, well, she took a swing at him with one hand, and he caught her hand, and so she had her car keys in the other hand, and she took a swing at him and gashed his forehead open and gave him a black eye. Really? And, like, all the guys in the emergency room were making fun of him for getting hit by a girl. <laughs> No. Is that professional, Drew? No. You never poked fun at any guy who got a uh, shiner from his girlfriend, no, did you? No. All right, so, but... Oh, but if you, it happened to you, I'd be... Oh, you'd be laughing yeah, your ass yeah, off. Yeah, oh, You're kidding? If a, a lightning rod went, went through me right now, you, you wouldn't be able to stop laughing. All right, but Shannon, what do you want to know, true. though? Well, you, it's like she... Uh, she's a little nutty. Yeah, well, it's just weird, because, like, all my friends were like, oh, my God, blah. She's, like, in my sorority, mm. and Ooh. so I know her very, very well. Is she, a, is she really a friend or just somebody you... She was, like, a friendly acquaintance. Right, she's just somebody you, you, you're friendly with, not yeah, really a friend. Yeah, and we... Don't become her friend. Well, that's kind of weird. That's my advice. My voice to your boyfriend is that she, he cut and avoid any and all contact. He even considered getting campus security involved and keeping her, you know, at, uh, away from him in some kind of structured way. And you keep your distance. Shannon? Yeah. You guys still do panty raids and stuff? <laughs> Not so much. You, um. you at least have the, the social pressures you can bring to bear through your you know, the, 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 the sorority there. Uh -huh. You know, you can, you can sort of enlist the help of your friends there and to sort of make it st structure things in such a way that you guys yeah. have pretty good distance between you. But this sounds like someone that really has problems, obviously controlling impulses that maybe have some real emotional chaos going on. Well, but wait a minute. Wait, wait, May. Wait, wait. May. All right. All right. Shannon. Shannon. Uh-huh. Uh, don't bunk up with her. Okay. That's my advice. And, and, and watch, watch your back in the shower. And we'll be back right after this. Okay. Love. Line. Love. Line. Love. Line. Love. Love. Line. We'll be right back. <laughs> This is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. We got Dr. Drew here. Let me get the number out. 1 800 Love 191. 1 800 568 3191. Or you can fax us at 310 854 4455. I got to take this lozenge out. Mm. I'm uh, sounding like Truman Capote with this thing in here. Uh, I wanted to comment real quickly on the last call. I think it was Shannon, with the facial slashing, the sorority girl. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to make I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to play uh, Perry Mason for a second here. It sounds really bizarre. This woman freaks out and slashes the guy with his keys. Right. But let's examine this a little more closely. She went with the bare hand first, but the guy picked it off. Right. And then went with the other hand. Right. So her initial impulse was not to slash. Right. Unless she was so deviant. That she knew the first hand would be picked off, and or, threw it as or maybe she was decoy. just going with both like a buzzsaw, and one one landed. Oh, the old windmail. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm warning you. Everyone thinks that men 
are more aggressive, that men are more, well, they're more dangerous, yes. but they're not more aggressive. I think a woman, a woman will hit you faster than a guy will. Mm-hmm. Guys, because a guy could hurt somebody. Right. And, and women, I mean, like, I've had girlfriends where I've just walked by and, like, stepped on their foot and they've just whacked me one. Your wife ever do that to you? No. She did it to me once. All right. Let's go to Vicki in Aurora, Illinois. Vicki. Hi there. Hey. Got a question for, I don't know, whoever wants to answer it. All well, right. to be one of us. All right. Uh, in the matter of a year, I've dated two guys. And I guess my question is, uh, what? how come the semen from a man tastes different? Uh. What, uh, I guess, does alcohol or vitamins, um, one stronger than the other? What, uh, I guess, what? Makes up uh, the taste, I guess. Let me have a crack at this one, Drew. Okay. All right. Vicky, here's the thing about people. Everyone's kind of got their own funk going, you know what I mean? I mean, everyone's got their own smell and their own thing. I don't know if any two people's armpits smell exactly the same, although you know when B.O. is coming. <laughs> but there's certain people that just have a certain thing going on, and then there's certain people that don't. Mm-hmm. Am I right? True. There's certain people that have breath that smells a certain way and certain people don't. But everyone has their own signature scent. Uh-huh. I didn't know if, like, um, uh, the, the, the one man that I dated didn't drink at all. And this, uh, the, de- the guy that I'm dating now drinks, you know, occasionally or whatever, and also takes a lot of vitamins and takes pretty good care of himself. Well, and I thought that maybe that had some kind of, you I, know, especially the alcohol. I think it all factors in. There's no doubt. There's no doubt of that that diet. But I mean, like, there's some people. Every time they fart, it smells like hell. <laughs> and it's not because they're eating chili fries every night. It's just every time they fart, it smells like hell. Uh-huh. Am, I, am I right? And yeah. then there's other guys like me. I fart poof. It just smells like baby powder. <laughs> I, I find that hard to believe. Oh yeah, it's a little white cloud and everything. It's great. People beg me to fart on oh, it, Vicky. Oh but, yeah. <laughs> that's my own weirdness. But let me tell you, I rented a video with that. But Vicky. Yes. Yeah. Why should semen be any different? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why shouldn't it vary a little from guy to guy? Just like, just like the breath, just like the farts, just like the body. Why should there be some like one uh, universal semen taste for all men? Why should we subscribe to all of that? <laughs> Drew, am I right? Vicky, thanks for your question. You're welcome. See you later. I thought that was a good answer. Adam, you waxed for three minutes about that. I just want you to think about that. <laughs> I should wax my ass. Look, look at this. this is, where is this? Hmm? Arvin Police Department. What, what is it? I don't, I don't know. Are we in some kind of trouble? I don't know. Is Barney there a Fife bench is, warrant? I, I don't know. This is uh, Jeff, 18. Jeff? Hey. Hey. Adam. Yeah. Your uh, hypothetical situation. Yeah. It happened to me, and everybody found out about it. Oh, so he got, the, he got both. You got the worst of both worlds. Yes. Yeah. And, and was it a work or a school type situation? School. 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 Yeah, high school? Yes. Yeah. And it destroyed my senior year. It did. Now, don't, don't That's pathetic. Now, not that you did that, but it's pathetic that people would think about somebody else, not you, so horribly that... I mean, that, you that, the that, right, that you're, you were tarnished yeah, because by, you rubbed up against yeah, this person. Yeah, because you had a relationship with the person that, that, that you are a bad person. I mean, it's just, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And, so uh, how ridiculous your question was in the first no, place. No, it was a brilliant question, Drew. And what were you thinking, Jeff? I don't, I don't remember. I think I was... Oh, what, well, how about the poor person? I mean, the, this poor person you had relations with. What? What is her deal? I mean, she doesn't. I don't know. I, th- I think she moved away because I didn't see her a couple months after. It was just kind of mm. we were at a party and that was it. And, and why did it ruin your senior year? Because everybody found out about it. And so what? So so what? I had a good senior year going through. Kids Come are on. very peer oriented. Yes. Can kids? Kids or teenagers, I should say, can just be cruel so it, it as somehow hell. Tar- tarnished how people perceived you. Sure. Yes, it did. Of course, it does. Now, Drew, I give an example of how it affected I'm you. I'm giving. Give right. an example. Right, give an I'm example sorry. of an interaction ahead, you had yeah. where, where this became an important consideration in your your ability to function. He got it. suspended. Well, in, right. in the dating game, I did. Yes. So it, it, that ruined that whole thing, because then I was, I was single for the rest of the year. So anyone that would be with that person, there must be something wrong with. Is that sort of the deal? No, it's just that every all the chain of events that happened in it, it was just kind of, it was a social screw-up. And by the way, I'm not You could I'm not be kind of a loser, though, I'm not Jeff. Disparaging, you never know. I'm not disparaging Jeff. I'm, I'm 
saying that your peers are pathetic in the way they reacted to this. Yeah, it you is. Know? But that I mean, there's a monkey see, monkey do kind of mentality. Oh, oh yes. I mean, oh, true, yes. in oh, all yes. honesty, we work at the same place. We work in the same building. Neither one of us are, is ever there. And you have white clouds, you admit. <laughs> I, I have little, little <laughs> baby powder puffs coming out of me all day long. But if you knew that uh, somebody, let's say Ann the producer, slept with some, some other male who you found a little repugnant, Okay, Ricky. Over there. Okay, Ricky. For the sake of argument, when you looked at Ann, you would have you would be cracking a little smile. I'd be and, have you rolling on the floor? And if you were single, you'd be thinking, "Gee, I bet uh, if Ricky got some, I could get some too." And it would affect things. There's just that that's that's the unfortunate reality of life. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and kids are cruel. You know, once the first girlfriend I ever had, I was like uh, 13. She called me up and she said. Adam, it's between you and, and my best friend at the time, Chris. She said, and I've chosen you. All my friends think I'm crazy, <laughs> but I've chosen you. And I thought, I knew right then it was going to be a tough life. Yeah, I, I knew this dating situation. thing was going to be hell from here on in. All right, Jeff, well, you can't take it back, so all I can say is uh, shower, dry off real good, and move on with your life. Christina. Uh, hi. Hey. 16 uh, from Tucson. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my best friend, who is a girl, mm -hmm. um, likes me a lot. Ah. Uh, and, um... Like, has a crush on you or something? Yeah. Huh. Is she lesbian? Yeah. Well, she's bi. Uh, mm. And, um, so she's, like, constantly, like, saying, like, how much I mean to her, and it's, like, really annoying. Are, are you sure that's not just emotionally connected, that there's a really physical thing there, too? Yeah. How old is she? How old is she? She's yeah. 15. And she's had previous experience with women? Yeah. Can you really be... At 15. I mean, can it's you be yeah. bi at 15? Can you be like... Can you I be mean, anything at 15? Yeah, well, that's... I mean, it's, it's a time of transition. I mean, I don't, I don't see people can really... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, say if, with if, great certainty what the, their sexual orientation is. If the government been. was giving out, you know, uh, sandals to all bi women, do you think they would acknowledge 15-year-olds as being, you know, technically bi no. or lesbian no. or whatever, uh -uh. like you said? Yeah, I mean, it's just there's so much experimentation that goes on at that age. All right, anyway. All right, go ahead. Okay. Um, and so she's like, basically, she's a really suicidal person. Great. Okay. Qu qu quick question. Was she sexually abused when she was younger? Yes. It's such a, it's such a common... Yeah. Thing your to, Nostradamus, yeah, girl. To, to have that kind of ambivalence about your sexual identity, to have the kind of extreme mood swings to the point of suicidality, to have that kind of intense kind of neurotic relationships. Ambivalence means you're just not sure which one yeah. you are. Uh, be very careful with your friend, Christina. I mean, she is extremely fragile. She should be getting some help. Is she seeing a therapist or anything? Um, no, her parents oh. don't really care. All this stuff that she's experiencing, this kind of craziness she brings on herself, is going to get a lot worse as she gets older. Hey, she's confided in you that she was abused? Yeah. And, and you're the only one that knows that? Um, no, there is a couple of other people uh, who get her to Get her to some help, really. Yeah. That, that, whatever else you're going to ask us, you know, be very careful with her. Don't, don't, obviously do not have a physical relationship with her because she could get completely fixated with you, as she already is, as you're finding out. Uh, and try to get us some help. Okay, but that's not even, like, the entire problem. What's the entire problem? Okay, um, I also, okay, my boyfriend, mm -hmm. he wants to have a threesome with her. <laughs> Your boyfriend's a scumbag. Typical guy stuff. Hey, let's get this chick. She's been abused. She'll do anything. And, and, you, and your boyfriend, if he really is into that kind of thing, is an abusor. He's somebody that picks people and victimizes them. I mean, a good victim is somebody who's been abused in some fashion when they were younger. So. Can you explain to your boyfriend that this good friend of yours had something tragic and unfair done to her and that it would be akin to uh, taking advantage of her? Perpetuating the abuse. That it would be like stealing something from a kid if he included her in this threesome and that it would only do more damage to her and that he should rethink this? Well, see, if I told him what happened, if she found out, then she'd get really, really mad at me. But if you just were in vaguer terms, in, in less less specific terms, yeah, you don't have to get into details. You have to, but but you have to tell him that this isn't going to happen because she is damaged, and and that you don't want to perpetuate it, like Drew said. I mean, you don't want to turn the knife anymore. She's already got a knife in her that needs to be taken out therapeutically. 
and you don't need to twist it around in her. You're, you're, you're getting into trouble here, Christina. You've got to be tough with your uh, moron boyfriend at this point, okay? All right. Uh, okay, can I say one more thing about the same situation like thing? Yeah. Lickety split. Okay, well, she's also always saying to me that I'm, like, her only friend, and, like, without me, she'd, like, basically completely totally kill herself. She's got to get help. Yeah. You cannot Christina, be her therapist yeah, yeah. at 16 yeah, with a crazy boyfriend wanting a threesome. <laughs> And, and you in, can't you know, be responsible. And everything. Yeah, you can't be responsible for somebody else's well-being. But I will tell you, in all honesty, given the kind of history she's had, she may be capable of that kind of behavior. So all the more reason why you've got to get some professional intervention here, so at least you can take some of the heat off yourself. All right? But there's really no way I can do that because you, her parents really Christina, don't care. Then go to somebody at school. Other get enlist the help of other adults that you know. And Christina, find a way. yeah, you're not an idiot, Christina. If there's a pair of boots you're dying to get, you would get them, wouldn't you? Probably. All right, make right. make her more important than the boots, and we'll be back in a minute. Love line will be right back, and if you're not here, we'll hunt you down and shoot you in the head. Just kidding. <laughs> This is Riff Rap from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and you're listening to Love Line, so don't go away. Oh, we're back. I'm Adam Carolla, and we got Dr. Drew over here. He's a board certified physician. Uh, Ricky Rackman, still on vacation, but I think uh, some people tune in at different times, and uh, if you wonder where Ricky is, he's on the love boat. Big fat, hollowed out pineapple in one hand, and a big tub of paba in the other. Of course, he's still in the room. And uh, he's enjoying himself, so he'll be with us next week. And until then, it's just me, Drew, and you. And let's talk to one of you right now. Drew, who do you want to talk to? Let's go to Samantha, 19. Samantha, Costa Mesa. Hi. Hey. How are you guys doing? I'm great. Good. Hey. I need advice. All right. Um, I'm six months pregnant, and it has changed my sex life with my husband sure. a lot. <laughs> imagine that. Oh, yeah. Um... I just, I don't have, like, the same drive that I used to. It's decreased. Uh -huh. And he takes it personally. Really? How old is your husband? 14. He's, he, no, he's 27. He just behaves 14. <laughs> no. Well, no, he doesn't hold it against me, but I think he, like, he just obviously doesn't understand how I'm feeling with all my hormones and stuff. And it's going to be different again after you deliver. Mm -hmm. It may be a while before things are normal again. Right. I just... I want to know, like, is like what I can do, because I still want him. I don't know. I want to please him, but like, my body's not even like working the same. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's harder to have an orgasm, and I don't know. And, and also, there's a psychological thing. Am, am, am I right? I mean, I've heard about this that women they don't feel as comfortable being naked, or you know, they feel they put some weight on. Some women, some women. They're like, you know, they got a break out on their back or something. You know, their hormones are but going really weird, more, and they don't more, feel as comfortable. I, I think more it's the biological state they're in. As you heard last time, we had a girl who called who was really eight, stimulated, eight months, yeah, and really into it. And some women completely shut down right. after well, pregnancy. Most women have a real shutdown biologically. Uh huh. Well, I don't. Yeah, that that only lasts about twenty years. I'm not uncomfortable with my body, but there's like certain, I don't know, positioning is hard because it's that is uncomfortable. Like what was fine before isn't comfortable now. Yeah, right. Well, and I just, I don't, I mean, I want to know like what, if you guys know, you know, like if Drew, like when your wife was pregnant or whatever, what, like what works, what for both of you or. <laughs> He's not going to apply this to himself and be no, too incriminating, but, I know, I know. but he'll, Just, he'll but tell I you he saw a picture in a book once and it went something like this. Go <laughs> but, ahead, Drew. But no, what, what works is, is I, I can't imagine your husband, it's hard for me to personalize it and not feel resentful towards your husband, which I'm, I imagine you must feel the same way. Well, it's, it's, I, I mean, he should, this is a time when he should be preparing your home and himself and you for this child. And yeah, that he, should be his focus, not be, his, not him getting off. I mean, it's ridiculous. He should and, be and, cart that up, Mike. And, by and the, the way, the no, getting no, off no, line. 
Uh, and, and the fact that he that that he is pressuring you to the point that you're feeling insecure and inadequate. I mean, that you're six months pregnant for God's sakes. You should be he should be there coddling you and and oh, asking you for what he. Christ no, this is a fact. And doing and and asking you what he can do to help you, not you obsessing about what you what can do. What do to, you want him to do? To, Boil water, knit booties. He's a man. Oh. He has needs. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I understand. <laughs> I felt like that at first for a while. So I understand. I mean, he doesn't put a lot of pressure on me. I just understand. He just like, it's just like I said, it's just different. No, no, so Drew is right. Drew is, I, I, you know, I was oh, making yeah, a little I fun there. What he's saying, but in the same, at the same point, I still, I mean. You want to, of course, you want to be good to your husband. So ask him what you can do. But yeah. that's all. Just that's add, you know, all you can do. And you know how. And then, and you can do only what you can do. Don't do things that are going to obviously jeopardize the pregnancy. Don't do things that are uncomfortable for you. And you may find that you have, like, no libido. There are times when sex will seem irritating to you, uncomfortable, you know, not, nothing you want to be around. And don't feel forced to do it in that situation. Right, right. And, and you, know, you know when you see those old sitcoms and the woman's pregnant, she has a uh, craving for sardines and orange <laughs> sherbet, and the guy runs out in the rain at 4 in the morning looking for a place. Flintstones. That's how you should treat a woman when she's pregnant. Yes. What she wants is what she gets because it's your child. Yes. That you're that oh, you're, yes. you're pushing up against <laughs> too. And if you can't if you can't put aside three months of a little sexual sacrifice at this point, then how are you gonna put aside money for college? How are you gonna put aside money for the medical care and the clothing and all the other sacrifices so, it all, takes? all that all that delayed gratification. Yes, you tell this guy that this is just the beginning of a long, long road paved with sacrifice. <laughs> Okay. All right. Good luck, Samantha. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, I'm not James, having kids, by the way. 21. I, I figured that. I got a road line with pornography. It's a whole different road. James? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question for Drew. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to know if it's uh, natural for a girl to produce milk if, the, if she's not pregnant or has a baby. That is that happens but it's not normal i mean you've got to worry about some medical problems if somebody's doing that but aren't there women They're, that if you stimulate yes, enough you can get a little yes, coming out of absolutely there absolutely there are but uh, if that's happened uh, i do suggest i believe that people should have a medical evaluation that they should have a it's called yeah, a pro um, pro prolactin level to make sure there's no oh, pituitary and a pregnancy test that pregnancy I just to test start off with and a thyroid test uh, and then if you if those screens are normal then it, you're one of those people who just is prone to develop to, to produce this stuff yeah, cause someone told me that uh, it could be a sign of uh, breast cancer yeah it can be but that would be unlikely in somebody who you know, again the doctor would be able to screen for that really just with a physical examination the other thing is medication can commonly do this but if she has breast cancer shouldn't she be able to feel herself up and feel if there's any uh, lumps mm, or anything in there at that age it's hard and most women have difficulty doing that but you know again what do you mean they have difficulty doing they it? have knowing what's normal and abnormal it's not. It's not that easy. Well, to, new is abnormal. I mean, if you're feeling mm, around, some women, and then, a lot of women have cysts that come and go. Really? Yeah, and they feel some of them. They can feel like tumors. They feel terrible. This, well, how does a cyst that comes and goes work? They because you've got a lot of cystic glandular material in there that can form cysts. So you'll be feeling fluid. yourself up, uh, you know, like in one month there's something there that's tender and it's there and hard. Next time it goes away, it comes back. And they can move around. And really? Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's like a it's like a deadbeat cousin. <laughs> this is Sean, 18, Oceanside. Hey, what's up, guys? Come hey. On. How you doing? Good. Yeah, I got a little problem. Lay it on us, Sean. All right. Uh, how do you cure a broken heart destroyed by lies but is now being destroyed by guilt? What, what are you guilty about? Isn't that a Bee Gees song? Huh? Right, go ahead, Sean. What are you right. guilty about? Well, just guilty about the lies. Oh, you lied? Yes. Yeah. You oh, you destroyed someone else's heart? No, not really. It's it's kind of a long story, but to make it short, um, let's just say at first I was sort of interested in the relationship, and it, it lasted for a year, and um, at first she was really interested. And um, towards the end, she became really disinterested, and then I fell in love with her. Oh, isn't that just how mature men work? <laughs> Perfect timing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and she, she was 14 and then 15, and then about 15, we started going out. And um, now she's 16, and I was about 15 when we... Or no, um, I'm 18 now, so we've been going off with each other since I was 17. So now we're since we were 16. All right, so what's the status now? Broken up? Broken up. She's how long's it been? Another guy. That's, that's, she's with another guy. Yeah. 
Probably with him right now. You know um, what I mean? No. Yeah, sure. <laughs> He's kind of a goody goody. Yeah. You know. Let me tell you, even even goody goodies need some. <laughs> so, what do you want to do? Well, I mean, I'm just I'm being eaten alive, and I need something to help me. I need something to. All right, all right, all right. Let me let me give you a little personal testimonial here, if you'll uh, if you'll bear with me for a second, Doc. Lord knows Doc would never dream of sharing any of his own personal heartache over the air. But I'm an <laughs> and, open And Lord book. knows I've been bearing with you for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but Sean, man, I had a girlfriend named Stephanie mm-hmm. when I was like 21. It was my first like real girlfriend. I mean, I'd gone out and, and, and lost my virginity. 21? Yeah, but this was like... You couldn't sustain a relationship until you were 21? No, I can't, wait a minute, I'm 31. I can't sustain one now. What are you talking about? <laughs> but here's the problem. She dumped me. Mm-hmm. After going out for a year, okay. you, you seem you sound amazed, surprised. I, <laughs> I was at that. the time. No one listening is so amazed, but you know what a fool believes. I was devastated, man. I mean, I couldn't eat, I couldn't mm. sleep. I was normal. in a, a funk That's of normal. all funks. Yeah. But this thing went on for a freaking year, yeah. and I swore I wouldn't call her, but I would call her, and oh, I swore and I wouldn't compose her, and it would clicking again, start keep exactly. resetting, start resetting it, and keep yeah. resetting it, and I was just. I really didn't care if I lived or if I died. So you were really depressed. I Truly remember depressed. sitting, uh, coming back from a horrible construction job in some guy's truck at night in some remote area and a train going by. And us, we were sitting on the tracks and we almost got clipped by this 80 mile an hour passenger train. And I remember thinking to myself, eh, wow. who cares? I didn't even care. Yeah. Wow. But the point is... is by the way, if people are out there feeling that way, I mean, that, that is a sign of profound depression. I was totally yeah, depressed, yeah. and I wasn't 17. And, and when, and when you're, But if you were 17, even in your early 20s, you might not even recognize you're depressed. All you know is you just don't care. Yeah, I mean, you, it is a way of life. You are yeah. knee-deep in this, yeah. and there and is don't no, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. And wow. if, if there is, it's a train. But let me tell you something, Sean. Let me tell you about the man today. I am swinging like a pendulum now, baby. And still knee-deep in whatever. I got the world by the tail. Do you know what I'm saying? I am so glad that frickin' Amtrak didn't clean out me and that construction guy in his dually because I would not be doing what I am today, which is just enjoying the hell out of my life. Yeah, I know it's going to end up that way, too. It will end up that way. And that's why it's important not to park on the tracks. (laughs) <laughs> you know, what I, no, I mean, I mean, literally a figure, right, right. Yeah, I mean, get off the tracks, keep things going, Sean. Things will be better. You will, you will live to love again. And next time, the down period will be half as short, and then it'll get shorter, and it'll get shorter, and then you'll become hardened, hardened, <laughs> and callous, and you won't give a rat's ass about anything anymore. All right, Let's Sean. Now, all right, we got a break now, Drew. Good luck. We'll talk, be back in a second. Love line will be right back. Exciting and new. Sing it, Drew. No, thanks. Come aboard. Wow. We're expecting you in love. Won't hurt. Oh, right, Swedish reward. All right, I know we're, we're done. Running a song. No, we got one call to take before we Ricky go off the air, right? Ricky is humming that right oh, now. Oh, man, the is he? Fat, uh, non-alcoholic daiquiri Martha, in very quickly. 18. Okay, um, I have a vaginal infection, mm-hmm. and my boyfriend now has or had something really weird on his penis. What? He had like, um, it looked like a rash, mm-hmm. like and his the head of his penis was like swollen, mm. and then now a week later, the skin mm-hmm. is like kind of peeling off. Mm. Yeah, had it. Eh, eh, really? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's he he. he she, I think she has a yeast infection, and it came oh, off no. on his dipstick. No, I doubt it. I, what I do you mean? mean? I thought it happened not, to me. Not at this point that there's real serious swelling and stuff. Yeah, that can happen, but uh, it, did it hurt him, his his uh, skin eruption? Excuse me? Was his skin eruption painful? Um, no, he didn't know he had it like that. Well, it would, it, I, I don't think 
I can tell you what it is over the radio. I worry about things like syphilis, and I worry about uh, uh, there's something called LGV, and there's something called chancroid, and there's and there's herpes. If, if indeed this was a painful thing, it may be as Adam said, just a yeast infection. Men can contract it. It's unusual. It can happen. Uh, I unfortunately didn't have well, the swelling. I just yeah, had the, but, the chafing. But part. absolutely, both of you need to be seen like tomorrow. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm I'm already taking medication. What do you have? What kind of infection do you have? Um. Well, he. Th- I have um uh, the. Gynolotrim vaginal cream. Yes, right. you just have some kind of and vaginitis. I have. I had a, a week's worth of tablets. All right. Well, it. it uh, you need a diagnosis specifically, and somebody needs to look at him also. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, bring him in. Yeah. And let me tell you, it ain't going to be pretty because I went into one of these female clinics and yeah. I didn't have a penny. Yeah. I just went to like a free clinic. Yeah. One of my girlfriend went to. So my pants are around my ankles, and it's nothing but women walking around there. Nice. And I'm in the doctor's office, and a couple other doctors. Females, nurses, what have you, come in. So we're having a conversation. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just standing there with my pants down. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, but that's, Drew, they should, doctors, if any doctors are out there listening, it, you should tell the patient as soon as it's okay for them to put those underwear back on, they should know a fifth yes. of a second before it's all right, okay. All right, all right. You should not have long conversations with your genitalia hanging out. And then I at agree. the end of the 15 minutes conversation, they go, oh, Oh, yeah, you can pull your pants up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Doc. I, I agree. All I right. agree with you. You with me? Yeah, I'm with you. All right. Well, but anyway, she needs to be seen. There's several different possibilities there, and uh, with no way we could clarify them on the radio. But that's it. We're done. We are. Oh, the uh, close of another fabulous show. I want to thank the lovely Sherry with Screaming Phones, the uh, distracted but gorgeous Ann, who's over there uh, doing God knows what. I think she was Harry some Back, kind of... Mike, the engineer over there, has repulsed all the females now. Mike will be lucky if they show up tomorrow. Dr. Drew, who's done uh, the work of three men. Tonight? Three retarded guys, but three guys. And, of course, me, Adam Carolla, Ricky Rackman on vacation, and we'll be back tomorrow night. You have been listening to Love Line. The opinions expressed by Ricky Rackman, Dr. Drew, Adam Carolla, or anybody else on this program are not necessarily anyone's. Loveline producer, Ann Wilkins. Give me a break!